My name is Adam Driscoll, and today I'm going to be talking about creating web-based tools with uh, PowerShell Universal. So what are we going to be doing here today? Uh, we are going to go through a quick PowerShell Universal overview. I have just a couple slides. I mostly want to do demos. Um, I'm going to try to get to all of them. I made too many. And uh, we are going to create some REST APIs with PowerShell. Um, we're going to do some automation stuff. I don't actually have a schedule, but we'll set up some scripts and we can see what that looks like. And then we're going to be building a UI uh, kind of around those APIs and that script. So what is PowerShell Universal? Uh, it kind of has three major feature groups, uh, APIs for like REST APIs. Um, automation, which are um, scripts, and we have uh, in-browser terminals, schedules, that kind of thing. Um, and then user interfaces. So we have a couple different ways to actually make user interfaces. I'll be showing off um, mostly the page designer today, but we also have Universal Dashboard integrated in here as well. Uh, today I'm going to be showing off the PowerShell Universal V3 beta. So we have some new stuff. Um, some of this is actually in V2, um, later versions of V2, but uh, some of this is coming in uh, V3. Like we've made some improvements to the APIs around multiple environments and methods per endpoint. Um, we have added SQL Server support, which is kind of the big feature for V3, which means you can kind of scale out your job runners and that kind of thing, um, and have high availability PowerShell universal instances. Uh, and then some you know, tweaks to uh, the user interface with new controls. We've upgraded our um, UI library for dashboards and that kind of thing. All right, so this is what we're going to be building today. A Magic the Gathering card search, random card, card stats, and life counter. So. <laughs> Uh, so I felt like, you know, we'll keep it light on the last day here. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to get into right now. Success. All right. So, um, if you don't know what Magic the Gathering is, it is actually a card game. Um, and it has been around for, since like the early 90s. And there are a lot of cards. So, uh, it's kind of got a, you know, a passionate uh, following. So what's cool is someone has gone ahead and created an API for Magic the Gathering called Scryfall. And it has all kinds of endpoints for um, cards and sets and that kind of thing. And we can consume that in PowerShell using invoke REST method. And then, um, you know, they have images and all kinds of stuff. We're going to be very lightly touching uh, this API, but it's going to give us all kinds of uh, cool stuff to show inside um, PowerShell Universal. So, let's get into PowerShell Universal. Um, this is kind of just more or less a, a pretty clean install. There's not too much in here. Um, and I'm going to log in. And this is kind of where, on the left-hand side, you'll see our kind of feature groups, APIs, automation, user interfaces, uh, platform settings, and just general settings, as well as security settings. Um, so, the most important thing that we have to do first is set up some branding because um, it's always important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a published folder, which means I'm going to take a local file path and publish it as an HTTP um, endpoint, more or less. Um, I have some of this here, so I don't have to type it all out. Um, and I will take this uh, local file path, and I'm going to set the um, request path, that's kind of the path that you go to to actually um, access this, to images. And now, if I were to go to images slash logo.png, it's not going to find it for some reason. <laughs> oh, I had a typo. There we go. Okay. So now it's, it's taking that local file on disk and serving it over HTTP. So anything in that folder will show up um, in this way. I think I also have a... JPEG here for a little smaller. Yeah, there you go. All right, so if we go back to Universal, um, I'm going to change a couple settings in here. We're going to call this uh, Magic Gathering. And uh, we want to do images slash logo.jpg. And if we save that, reload it, and now we've branded it uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, the other place that you can actually do that is in um, a login page, if we did images slash logo dot png, um, actually I think I'll pop that up there. Images slash logo dot png, save that, let's see if that works. So there's that image, and now when I log out, rather than PowerShell Universal, it says Magic the Gathering. 
So um, it's uh, kind of funny how important that is to people. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so now we have our managers gathering uh, partial universal instance branded. Very important. All right, so now let's look at creating an API. So the first API I'm going to create is going to be a random. Well, before that, I actually want to let's put a variable in for the Scryfall API so I don't have to keep defining it over and over again. So if we go to platform variables, I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it Scryfall API, and I have that in here. Um, so it's just api.scryfall.com. And now that I define this variable in here, oop, not in the description though, I did that actually when I was practicing this. Um, now that I have that API defined uh, in that variable, uh, I can use that variable anywhere inside PowerShell Universal as just like a regular PowerShell variable. So let's go to endpoints. Um, I am going to make a random, let's see, yeah, random card endpoint. And we'll just turn off authentication, create that, um, and go to the edit details. And now you can see I just have an editor where I can put PowerShell script. Um, and this is the API that's going to get called um, to actually execute uh, this PowerShell script. So, again, I have this saved here. Um, oops, I don't want to learn more about my own product. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'll go through this code, but I'm just want to type it all. All right, so I have a random card, and I'm calling the Scryfall API, um, calling card slash random. So it's just going to give me a random card in Magic the Gathering game. Uh, from there, I don't want to like return the whole like card data, so I'm just going to return a couple things like the name, type, set, the image URL, the text, and the flavor text. So if we save that, and we actually execute it in here. So you can see it went out to Scryfall, and we have um, some information there. But what's really cool is that I actually copy this, like, invoke REST method call, pop that open, and I put that in my terminal, execute it. You can see that it went out and ran my PowerShell script inside PowerShell Universal and actually returned an object back because um, it was formatted as JSON. So you could actually pick stuff out of it. All right, so now let's make a little UI over that. Uh, if we go to, uh, come on, mouse. If we go to pages, we can create a new page. Uh, I'm just going to call this one random. And we won't worry about the URL. You can change the URL, put a description on it and stuff. Um, and if we actually view that page, you kind of see something like this. So um, this is just blank page, nothing too interesting. It uh, looks kind of like the admin console, except that it just has the pages. Um, but if you click edit, that's where it gets kind of fun. So we have properties for the page, a toolbox, and then variables that show up in the page. So um, since we want to uh, display our random card here, uh, what we want to do is kind of load some data when this page loads. So I can select my API and get my random card API in here. So if I just click that, save it. Save that, it's going to reload the page. And now when I look at the variables, you're going to see that it actually loaded up uh, the variables from that API. So now I have like the image, I have the card name, type, that kind of thing. So what's cool about that is then I can start adding controls to my page. So um, I'm going to add an alert at the top. It's just kind of a little box that you can kind of color depending on what you want to show. And rather than having the message in here, I can put the name of the card. So now we have Raging Minotaur in there. Um, but obviously, we want to display the card itself. So we can put our dollar sign image into that URL there. And now we have the actual card itself. Uh, and let's do one more. We will put in a, whoops, I want to. So I'm going to put in some text, um, and I got to look at the variable again. I don't remember what it is. I think it's just, just text. Okay. So then we can just replace this text with dollar sign text, and um, boom. So what's cool about those variables is you can use them in like any one of the um, any one of the fields that like uh, accepts text. So 
Uh, I'll show you in a little bit how we're going to put it into a URL to dynamically update the page based on things that we click and that kind of stuff. All right, so there's our page and we save it. Um, and a user of this page that's not an administrator just wouldn't have that edit button and it would look like this. And if you were to actually resize this and kind of lay things out differently in smaller screen sizes, it'll uh, automatically adapt based on the screen size. So now when I reload this, um, it's just gonna get a new random, if it hits scryfall appropriately, uh, a new random card every time I reload it. All right, so now let's look at um, a script and how to um, actually like take some user input and produce something based on that. So I'm gonna create a new script. I'm just gonna call it card search and create that. So the idea with scripts is it's just, um, unlike it, APIs are kind of designed for speed. You can kind of think of it more like an Azure function than um, kind of a task scheduler kind of thing. This is more of a task scheduler kind of thing, but um, we do integrate with the PowerShell host um, pretty tightly. So we'll actually look at the param block and create um, a form based on that. If you have right progress in there, it'll show up in here. If you have read host, it'll actually wait and wait for the user to enter or something. Um, so yeah, it's like tightly coupled with the PowerShell host. So I'm gonna grab my script sample here and I will go through this. A little bigger. All right, so at the top is a param block. Uh, we have three parameters. I have a card name that I wanna search for format to return it in, and then whether or not we want to, you know, make it pretty. So uh, if you were gonna like display the JSON or something like that, you'd probably have that pretty flag at the bottom. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cache this uh, because uh, Scryfall doesn't want you to call it more than like 10 times a second. So if this was like a busy um, API, I could cache it. And if it's in the cache, I'm just gonna return the card based on that card name. Um, then I'm calling the invoke rest method again uh, on Scryfall, the card slash search. Um, uh, REST API now, and passing in the card name, the format, and whether or not to make it pretty. And then I'm doing the same thing, or similar thing that I was doing with the random, where I'm putting in the name type set and a link, and I'll, you'll see what that link does in a little bit. It's something we added in V3. All right, so if I were to actually save this and run it, and you can see like it automatically looked at the param block and I have things I can enter. I can choose other environments to run it in. So if I wanted to run it in 7.2 or Windows PowerShell, the integrated environment actually runs it um, directly inside the PowerShell Universal server. Uh, and then you could, if you specify run as credentials, you could elevate it to another account. So let's search for some dragons. Click OK there. So now it's going up to Scryfall and on the left hand side, you'll see kind of like the standard output that you would see inside um, you know, your PowerShell terminal. Um, and then on the right hand side, we actually capture the pipeline output. So um, you can actually use it later. So as you can see here, I have a hash table, um, or a bunch of hash tables really, with uh, different dragons that uh, were returned from the Scryfall API. And what's cool is you can then consume these. It's like, it uses the CLI XML to serialize all this. And you can consume these objects in other scripts later, sort of thing. So we actually store that all in the, in the database. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna create a page around that script. So I am gonna go here, I'm gonna say card search, uh, let's turn off authentication. I have a card search page, and now when I click view, you'll see that both random and card search show up on the left-hand side there. And this page is blank, but if I went to random, it would still show my random page, and then go back to card search. So what we're gonna add here is a form. So forms can be used to um, call APIs or scripts. Um, I am gonna make this the card search form. Card search. Oop, oh wow. Search scryfall for cards. Okay, um, and we have some options, like you can reset it. If you want it to show like progress or output while the script is running. Um, you, then you need to specify a target. I want to run my card search script. Um, and then I'm gonna put just the one field in, which is card name. We're not gonna worry about, um, you know, making it pretty or what format to return it in, that kind of thing. Uh, I want this to be a text box and it is required. 
then I'm gonna customize the icon, which is very important. And we're gonna say search instead of save. Okay, so let's try that. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. I wanna change the result type. Um, by default it's none, which means it'll just say like, success, you submitted this form. Uh, text will actually return um, the text of that PowerShell script that ran or the API that ran. And then a table will actually look at the object that was returned and generate a table based on that. So I'll save that, save this, reloads it. Now let's try our dragon again. All right, so it actually went out, called Scryfall, returned the dragons, and you can see that my type set name and value are there. Uh, and that value is actually that nested hash table that defined a link. So since I said like type link and the URL and then the text for the link, it generated the link for me. And um, that doesn't go anywhere right now. So I just get a four, 404 there. But I want to uh, take it to the next step and actually make that link go somewhere. So we're gonna create uh, another API. Uh, I, I will create um, link slash, I gotta make sure this is, right one, because I need to get, um, well, let me think about this. This is card, no, that's the link I'm generating here, card. So I will just do um, slash cards, slash colon ID, you might not be able to see that very well, but um, I put a, a colon in front of the ID, and that makes this route um, dynamic. So you can put anything in that ID um, part of the route and it will show up inside your API. So, I'm gonna say okay, we're gonna turn off this, and we're gonna go like this. Um, and now, again, I'm gonna go and grab this so we don't have to type it all. Um, and this is gonna be very similar to uh, the random one, except that we're passing in an ID uh, rather than calling the random endpoint. So, in this example, um, I have a param block at the top, and it's gonna automatically bind that dynamic route parameter to this ID. So, um, and then from there I'm doing the caching again. I'm calling the scryfall API with the ID of that card. Um, and then I'm returning the same data that I was returning the uh, random, the random card search thing. So, uh, and then we're caching it. So let's save that. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna produce a page for um, specific cards. So we can do the same thing that we did with the API where we can go, um, this is just gonna be like card, the URL is gonna be card slash colon ID. So almost exactly like we did with the API, we can make this um, have a variable in it. All right, so I'm gonna click okay here and we're gonna go view that. And now I have a card page um, and what you're gonna see in here is that we have additional route variable in my variables window. So uh, it says ID is the ID, and that comes from the route. So if I were to put a different ID in here, like if I just put something random, like um, Now when I look at that variable, you can see that it's changed because the route changed. So I can use that in my um, UI. So let's actually go ahead and I am gonna add a image, and I think I can just do, oh wait, before this, before this. I want to load, um, I want to load the, uh, the API for my cards, because I need the data for the cards. So when the page loads, I'm gonna call this API, but I, I want it to be dynamic based on the route that you go to. So I'm gonna do uh, cards slash uh, ID. I gotta make sure, I know, it. We have a bug right now where it's, um, it is case sensitive. <laughs> it's like, why isn't this working? All right, so we save that. It's gonna reload the page. And what we're actually gonna see is that it, you know, it's not gonna work right away because, um, you know, there's probably no card with this ID. So it's like returning an error. We actually looked at that. So let's try, um, oops, I wanna do this. Sorry, I had a little big here. What I do want to do is put an image in there, and we're going to just do dollar sign image because we that's coming from that REST API that I called. It's one of the properties on there, and you can see that it didn't work because it doesn't know what 
dollar sign image is in this context. That variable doesn't exist. But if I go to card search, now I should be able to do drag in. And if you look at the, the URL to this, you probably can't see it, but it's pointing to this, the card uh, page that I just created, and it has the ID of that card. So if I click that, you can see that it actually loads the, that specific card into that page. So one thing to note is like the card now shows up here in the, um, in the navigation, but you really don't want it there because like it's not gonna specify an ID. So if you go to the card page, you can actually hide dynamic pages like this um, from navigation. So just turn off show in navigation and um, that card page will uh, no longer show up in there. So if I were to click off here, you wouldn't see that. So now we have a form that we're creating. It's going out to Scryfall based on user input. It's generating that table. And then from there, we actually have like another step where we can actually drill into something. So, you know, if in, in a business sense, you might have like a VM search or a user search, and then you would click the info button on that VM or that user, and then you would see all the information about them. And we could put more forms on here um, to take additional action and that kind of thing. All right. So um, I want to show off one more thing with pages. And I'm going to actually update my, um, my random API to be a little more, um, not robust, but it's going, to, it's going to take some more statistics. So let's make this a little smaller. So we're getting a random card, but I actually want to like track some information about the random card that I'm getting. So I have endpoint y'all that this is actually going to get that random card and um, collect some statistics and then kind of store those in the cache. Uh, you can throw them wherever you want, but I'm just storing them in the cache about the random card. So now we get the random card. Um, if we don't have stats yet, I'm gonna create a new hash table that has colors and sets. Um, from there, I'm going to add the, the card set to there if it's new. I'll add it, if it's already in there, I won't. And then um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bump the color count up, sort of thing. So um, now we're gonna store that in the cache and return the random card as we were before. So from like a usage perspective, it should work the same way. I'm just getting random cards out of here. But what that allows us to do is we can actually consume those stats and display them on a page. So I'm actually gonna create two new endpoints um, in here. One thing I might wanna try, I didn't, try this before, but I'm gonna see if this works. So if you've never used PowerShell Universal before, um, everything that we are doing is actually, um, is actually uh, stored as PowerShell scripts. So uh, one thing we added in V3 is this like repository editor. So everything we've been doing has been generating PS1 scripts in the background. So there's my PowerShell script. Uh, you can see my images are in here. Uh, my pages are in here. And we have this dot universal folder which has like a bunch of configuration stuff. So if you actually looked at like the endpoints file, you'd see that we have new PSU endpoint and all that kind of thing. Um, so I should be able to just do this. Probably won't work and then I'll be like, oh no. All right, so I've saved my, um, my endpoints.ps1 file that contains these new endpoints. And these endpoints, one returns colors and then one returns uh, the sets. So if we go to API, hopefully, uh, it just automatically picks that up. So now I have um, stats and colors and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, we have like a Git integration that will actually pull down files into a, um, a PowerShell Universal instance. So uh, you can kind of like synchronize all your PowerShell Universal instances and drive it via code. So there's like, um, you know, the single source of truth are those PS1 files for the configuration. All right, so now I have two new endpoints. I have this like colors endpoint, and if I execute that, you can see that I, since I ran that random um, API a couple times, it generated uh, a couple of color values. I got two greens and uh, one blue, I think. And if I go back and do the uh, card sets API and run that, you'll see that I have a list of sets that those, those cards came from. So it was three different sets. So I'm gonna make a, um, a stats page for this. Pages. 
how it stands. Turn on this, and we are going to update this stats page. All right, so we have controls for um, charts, and I think uh, like a pie chart makes sense for colors. So um, plop a pie, a pie chart on there. Uh, the angle field and the color field, so the, the angle is like how large the pie slice is. I think that was value. And then the color field, in this case, is color. So um, it's going to be funny because the colors won't match. But uh, we'll put API and we will select our color API and save that. And now uh, we have this chart that is actually dynamically reading from that API to display um, those values we saw that it was returning. So save that. And then if we like go to our random thing now and go back, you can see that we, it's like dynamically updating that. Because every time we hit the random, it updates that cache and our statistics change. So the other thing we can do is display like our sets. So we have that other stats endpoint to display sets. So I am going to put this table in here. And I'll make that a little bigger. Uh, and I am going to say this is sets. Data source, we're going to set as the API, and we're going to load it from sets. And we have one single column in there, which is um, it's a basic column, and it's name. Oops, name in. And we can make it sortable, sure. And if you save that, you can see those are all the sets that those cards came from. So if I save this, um, that's kind of how it would look to an end user um, without that edit button. And again, if we go to random and stats, random and stats, it's up updating both the, the table, pie chart thingy, and uh, the list of sets. All right, so um, now I want to show some integration into a uh, universal dashboard. Um, so that's kind of how PowerShell Universal started. It was universal dashboard. It was a PowerShell script that, or module that did all this without the fancy admin console or anything. Um, and we actually still support that. So uh, you can still build web pages using Universal Dashboard inside of uh, PowerShell Universal. So uh, I'm going to create a new dashboard. I'm just going to call it Life Counter. And um, similar to like scripts and um, uh, like schedules and stuff like that, you can run it as uh, multiple environments, PowerShell 7 or Windows PowerShell, um, different accounts, and that kind of thing. We also have like role-based access and everything for uh, dashboards too. So when you first create a dashboard, uh, what you're going to see is like this demo dashboard. Um, that this is where we actually upgraded our. Um, we upgraded this to the latest version of Material UI, um, which is version five. And as you can see, we have a little work to do. This is our beta. You can see the styling is a little bad, and but it does support um, you know the green light themes out, out of the box, and you can create like really, really, really uh, custom UIs with um, you know, this, uh, this PowerShell module. And if we look at how that's made, um, you'll see that it actually has its own set of commandlets. So we have new UD dashboard, new UD row, new UD column, new UD card, um, forms. And the way you build a form in da uh, Universal Dashboard is you're actually defining all the um, parameters for that form. Um, and yeah, and then you have an on submit. So it's, it's like it's similar to like in some ways to like Windows Forms, where you have like these events get fired when certain things happen. You can update controls and stuff. So it's a lot more dynamic than um, the Pages feature we have, but uh, it also has a learning curve. Obviously, you have to learn the whole uh, Universal Dashboard module. But uh, we have a bunch of examples online, and the forums are good ways to learn that. But I am going to grab. Um, a dashboard that I made for this, and we'll kind of step through how this works. And then, oops, I put an A in there. And then we'll see it in action. So, uh, I created a new dashboard called Life Counter. And um, what it's doing is it's it has a single page called Home. It checks to see if there's a cache of players yet. If not, it creates a new list of players. Um, from there, it has a dynamic and a dynamic is used for like refreshing certain parts of a page. So um, I'll show you how we do that in a sec. Um, we have 
two special like um, scopes inside Universal Dashboard. One is the cache scope. That's for all um, people that visit the website. You can cache data in there, and it'll be really fast. You can avoid like calling out to you know your scripts and APIs. Uh, and then we also have the session scope. So that is actually variables that you want just for this user. So I'll show you um, how that works with an incognito window here in a sec. So I have a single, uh, I have a form with a single te text box to uh, get the name of the user. And then from there, what I'm doing is I'm storing that player's name in their session. Um, I'm calling sync UD element, which causes this dynamic to reload automatically. So we're using like WebSockets and everything like that to you know, tell the browser to reload. Um, and we're doing a broadcast, so any user that is on that page, will, that will uh, re reload. So this is useful for like, you know, you're cl collecting data somehow and you, know, you want to update a whole bunch of users that are connected to this dashboard. You would do something like that. You'd broadcast and like, you know, all the charts would update or all the tables would update. Uh, from there, I am adding the user um, to the cache of players. So I'm taking their name and their life total and putting it in there. All right, and then um, I have a button to create a new game. Uh, pretty much what that does when you click it is it wipes out the players, it uh, kills the session name for the current user, and then it reloads the page. And then finally, we have a table that has all the players in it. So the first column is a player column, just with their name. And then the second column is actually their life total, but it's made out of like three different components. So I have a stack, which just kind of allows you to stack things next to each other or on top of each other. Um, and then a button that reduces the player's life or increases the player's life depending, you know, who you're clicking on there. Um, and then in the middle of those buttons is just a display of their life sort of thing. So, um, some cool things if you didn't notice that, it'll actually re reload the page automatically when you make changes. So, um, you can kind of quickly develop on this. Uh, so I'll put my name in here. I actually turned on, um, I made this a blank page, which means it gets rid of the header and all that kind of stuff. And I put Adam in there. And now you can see that Adam is listed in here and my life total is 20. So I can reduce my life total by clicking this. And if I were to open an incognito window that doesn't share the same cookie as, um, as my current browser, I can go and navigate to the Life Counter homepage and you'll see this user is getting asked for their username because they you don't have it stored in their session. So, put Bill in there. And now you'll, what you'll notice is Adam and Bill showed up in this browser, but Adam and Bill also showed up in the other browser. So it's actually you know using WebSockets to communicate to both browsers. And um, if you increment the life total, you'll see it's happening in both places. So effectively, these could be on two different remote machines, you know, wherever. All right, so I would say like 80% of the people that use PowerShell Universal are building uh, really crazy dashboards with this. So there are, I don't know, we have like hundreds of controls now because um, of the extensibility of it. You can actually create your own PowerShell modules. They use your own React controls and load them up in there. Um, I think we have something like 60 that are built in the box, including like charts and you know text and you know, layout things, all kinds of stuff. But we have docs for all that. All right, so the one thing I wanted to show is how to integrate this with, um, with a page. So uh, it's not a super elegant solution, but um, if you actually use a blank, um, blank dashboard like I did where it doesn't have um, a header or anything, you can actually embed it into, um, into a page using an iframe. And I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so. If I were to do, what am I looking for here? Is it data display? Yeah. I use an iframe. And I want to set the URL to, I think it was slash life counter. Save that. And now my like life counter control thing is actually um, embedded in my page. So you can kind of like centralize everything into your page that way. You can see it like has this little weird flicker when it loads and that kind of thing. But um, it kind of allows you to integrate um, both your really complex controls, like the one we built in um, Universal Dashboard, into like a simpler like page layout that you can actually drag and drop here. So kind of where we're headed with this is um, hopefully uh, making it a little more integrated with Universal Dashboard. So um, 
you could have your drag and drop experience, but you could also build your components um, that are like really complicated, like this particular one, um, with the universal dashboard module. Uh, and then um, eventually they'll just kind of end up in your toolbox. So that's kind of where we're headed. But there's nothing stopping you from just you know, not using the page designer at all and just building uh, dashboards yourself too. All right, so let's cancel up here. And let's make sure that was the last thing I wanted to get to. All right, so I do want to show off um, the repository a little bit more just to uh, provide some more context. So everything in PowerShell Universal is a PowerShell script except for pages. Those are stored as XML files, but it's still version controllable. Um, and we are just kind of generating this XML, and that, that's what generates that page. Um, the idea being that there's nothing really executable in the, the page itself. It's just calling your um, endpoints and scripts. And then you saw me configure some other things, like the um, login page. There's where I set that image. The published folder shows up in there. Um, we have a manifest of scripts, so it won't just like pick up your scripts. Uh, you can put them into this kind of manifest file, and that allows you to configure additional things like, you know, error action, info action, um, the location of the script if it's in a folder or not, whether to run it as another user, that kind of thing, um, and uh, also variables, which, uh, you know, show up in here. So we do have secret management support where we actually integrate with Microsoft Secret Management Module. If you guys sat through that session. Um, it will actually store them in the vault that you have configured, that kind of thing. All right, um, and I think that I got through that much faster than I was planning. All right, well, thank you for coming to my session, and uh, find me if you ever you know, want to look at some of this or chat about anything, so <laughs> uh, thank you.